Hi, I'm Ksenia from Guiding Star with Ksenia. Thanks so much for joining me for this special series all about Saturn and his transits through each of the houses in the horoscope. Some of you might be familiar with a video I've done in the past all about Saturn and his transit through the sign of Aquarius and where that's going to fall for each sign. This video series may be a little similar to that. We might cover similar topics of information. But there will also be more depth in this series. So I thank you for joining me for this ongoing series throughout this autumn. And for those of you who aren't aware, I do offer readings for, for people who want to understand more about their chart and their life journey through astrology. If you pop over to my website, www.guidingstarastrology.com, you'll find plenty of webinars available there to learn more about astrology, plenty of astrological products to help you to teach astrology or learn astrology. And of course, there's readings as well, where I can personally delve into the depth of your chart and what it has to say about you and your journey. If you're interested in more information above and beyond what I offer here on my YouTube channel, then you can also jump onto my Instagram page or Facebook pages where I share Oracle card readings daily, where I also provide you with other articles of information about astrology. So do pop over to those, uh, those areas. Their links are in the description below. Can I also just say I would be so honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and support the work that I do here in growing the knowledge of astrology throughout Australia and the world. Saturn is the seventh planet out from the sun when we include the sun in this counting uh, astrologically. Saturn is also the last of the visible planets that we can see with the naked eye in the sky at night. Beyond Saturn, to see Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, we need a telescope. And so it's considered in ancient astrology that Saturn is the planet that actually correlate the final frontier, if you like, that correlates to our visible earthly reality, the manifested reality on planet Earth in this incarnation. Beyond that, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto all uh, have correlations to our inner self, our psyche, our past lives, our, our wounds, our uh, personal issues and our, the way we think about things and the way we integrate things into our lives. So it's, they are very psychological energies, whereas up until Saturn, we have both psychological things happening from those planets, but also material manifestation happening from the planets that we can see. It's an old hermetic principle, which is called as above, so below, as without, so within. What we see in the sky above us is reflected in our reality on the earth and the old uh, principle taken further is also what is going on energetically within our soul and our psyche is also reflected on the outer uh, in our earthly life as well. So Saturn being the furthest planet out as a material planet, as a planet of manifestation, governs most strongly what happens on planet Earth and for our individual journeys as well. And the reason that is, is that the further out you go with the planets, the more impact that they have on our lives here on Earth. That might seem a little bit odd. We, would we might ordinarily think that the closer the planet, the, the greater impact it would have on us. Therefore, Venus should be the most impactful planet of all. But that's not the case in astrology. And it's to do with the, the time and the speed of a particular planet. With Saturn, its movement is so slow that the energy has time to build and therefore really pack a punch. Where Venus or the Moon, if you want, for example, as well, they whiz around the, the astrological chart very quickly. The Moon goes around in one month. Venus goes around in approximately, give or take, a year, depending on whether she goes retrograde or not. But Saturn takes 30 years to do a cycle of the astrological chart and therefore the energy has a lot of time to accumulate in one spot and therefore we feel the impact most strongly. Saturn, as with all planets, has things that it rules, things that it governs in this earthly reality that we experience. Saturn rules over structures, organizations, hierarchies, governments, regulations and rules. Saturn is also known as Father Time. He governs time here on planet Earth. 
there are some realms where time doesn't matter time is immaterial but here on planet earth we are governed by time as a spirit being manifested into human material form we are governed by time and saturn is the master of time saturn also represents things like responsibility duty hard work maturity perseverance and endurance in life these are all actually really great things and we tend to receive the blessing of these saturn positive qualities when we start getting into our mid to late 30s that's when saturn matures in in vedic astrology he reaches his maturation and when he reaches his maturation essentially we learn how to carry our burdens in life and everyone at some point needs to learn that lesson certainly by the age of 35 36 when saturn matures we step into our full adulthood we're no longer young adults we're no longer children we have fully reached maturity and hopefully if we're manifesting at a high level we've learned how to carry our burdens saturn represents structures as i said but also traditions he is the master of the legacy we want to leave behind as well he he has a connection with the 10th house in astrology which is all about legacy that we want to leave for those who come after us he also has a connection to authority figures and those in authority over us saturn on the more negative side of his energy rules restriction and blockage fear holding things back keeping things from us and starving us of the things we like but also equally starving us of the negative things in life if he is making a particular aspect in our natal chart in astrology saturn is the ruler of two signs traditionally the sign of capricorn mainly and then in traditional astrology the sign of aquarius in modern astrology uranus is considered to be the ruler of the sign of aquarius but in traditional astrology capricorn sorry saturn is the ruler of capricorn and aquarius in archetypal astrology saturn is seen as the boss figure the ceo because i like things to be a bit lighter and a bit more fun i kind of envisage saturn as kind of the head of uh, control in the get smart series if you're familiar with the chief he's managing all these bumbling idiots all around him trying to catch the bad guys and here is the chief just trying to keep everything under control managed well organized well structured and adhering to what needs to happen and the rules and principles of control in the series get smart but he's still likable a lot of people will paint saturn to be the the boogeyman of the horoscope he's out to get he makes life tough he's he's you know he's negative and certainly some streams of astrology see him as the great malefic i kind of liken him instead to the great father figure in the sky if you imagine a father who's uh you know you, you his daughter or son is 16 and they're about to go out to a party and dad the father figure is sitting there and uh, as they run out the front door and says hang on what time are you going to be home where are you going i want the phone number of the place where you're going to be are there going to be any other adults at the party you know you've got to do things properly by the book there's no no more being no being silly and i want you home by 10 o'clock and the children are like oh dad but dad's strict and firm and doesn't budge an inch he sets boundaries he says no way home by 10 o'clock i'm not you're not going to be one of those children who's out running around the streets at all hours of the night getting up to no good so he is this protector father figure energy authority figure energy in the horoscope now sometimes we see people manifesting saturn in a very negative way they are the authority figure with abuse and violence and control now often that would indicate a connection with mars in a chart if that's how it was playing out but then there are other people who manifest beautiful saturn energy that's benevolent that is you know lots of boundaries lots of regulations and rules but it's for your greater good it's for your upliftment it's for the betterment of yourself society humanity whatever so there are there are many ways saturn can manifest but he is always the energy 
of this protector father figure. Even in karmic astrology, Saturn represents our fears that we have from previous incarnations. For example, if you happen to fall off, and many people who've had readings with me will have heard this analogy, if you happen to in a past life fall off the Grand Canyon to plummet to your death, and then you reincarnate and you've got this fear of heights you can't explain, that's Saturn putting protective boundaries of fear in place so that you don't go and fall off the, <laughs> the, the Grand Canyon again and plummet to your death in the next life. So he is very much about our psychic protection or, or karmic protection and sometimes people see him as a representation of uh, karmic blockage based on the, the hurts and the wounds and the fears we've experienced in past incarnations. According to the reading I've done, Saturn rules the, uh, the gemstone qualities of obsidian, uh, also tourmaline and hematite, the heavy black stones that are, in the case of tourmaline, especially particularly good at absorbing energy. Saturn also correlates to the color brown, which is why for this series I'm dressing in very autumnal tones of brown. And as a ruler of the earth sign of Capricorn, Saturn is a very earthy type of planet and it has a lot of earth energy about him. And so one of the remedies that we can offer for any Saturn troubled times is to be in nature or to walk barefoot on the earth. Saturn also rules rocks and gravelly soil and rocky places. Isolated places do come under Saturn's governance occasionally as well. So to be in those places is actually to be in a Saturnian environment or to live in a, a garden full of rocks or a house that's made of stone is a very Saturnian uh, environment to live in. Saturn also governs things like uh, minimalism and restraint and restriction. If we were to have Saturn sitting permanently in our first house, then we might find that our body was restricted in some way, either um, through, uh, you know, our, our, our size is restricted or our height. So our, either our outward uh, expression or our upward expression would be restricted. Uh, Saturn would be affecting our body in that way. So he rules restriction and restraint. So that's a little in a nutshell picture of what Saturn as a planet represents. Now we're going to dive into what it means to have Saturn transiting through the houses. But first, let's start with an explanation of how to assess where Saturn is according to whole sign astrology by transit. So here is our little Saturn planet. Let's pop him into the sign of Aquarius. At the time I'm recording this, Saturn is looking at making his first sojourn into the sign of Aquarius for thirty in first time in 30 years. So it's probably a good place to, to start with this explanation. But if you're watching this down the track in a couple of years time, then you can look for whatever sign Saturn happens to currently be in in the sky. How you would do that would be to look um, for a, a, a website such as planetwatcher.com and it will show you the glyph of Saturn and where Saturn is currently sitting, in what sign Saturn is currently sitting. But for the example and illustration that we're going to use for this video, we're looking at Saturn being in the sign of Aquarius in this case. So this video is all about Saturn transiting through the first house of anyone's horoscope. So in this case at the moment, if you happen to be Aquarius rising and we can see Saturn transiting, this is my indicator of the sign rising on the eastern horizon at the moment of your birth, let's say it's Aquarius, then for you Saturn is going to be in your first house in whole sign astrology. Because in whole sign astrology, there are 12 houses and they're divided up equally. Aquarius will be the first house and it doesn't matter whereabouts your ascendant degree falls, if you're familiar with this uh, type of astrology. Um, it doesn't matter if your ascendant degree happens to be the last degree of Aquarius, it still doesn't matter if it's in Aquarius, your first house in whole sign astrology 
is the sign of Aquarius. If you want more information about how to assess and understand whole sign astrology, I do have a video that I can put in the um, description below that links to an explanation of whole sign astrology if you need more support with that. But um, this will be your first house in whole sign astrology. Pisces would be your second, Aries your third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on around the horoscope. So for this particular video, we're looking at Saturn in the sign of Aquarius and therefore the first house. Now, if you happen to have, let's say, Capricorn rising, then you will have had Saturn in your first house for the last two and a half years because Saturn spends two and a half years in any given sign at a time. So Capricorn rising has just experienced what it's like to have Saturn in the first house. In about two and a half years to three years from now, Saturn will start transiting the sign of Pisces. And that will have then Saturn as the, uh, sorry, Saturn in the first house. Anyone with Pisces as their rising sign will be experiencing a Saturn transit of their first house. So really, how you work this out is to look at the sign on your rising on your horizon, what your, what your, whatever your rising sign is, and then take a look at planetwatcher.com and figure out exactly when you are going to experience Saturn in that sign. For Capricorn people, they're not going to have Saturn in their sign for another 30 odd years before that occurs again, so they can have a bit of a breather. But let's take a look now at what it means to have Saturn in the first house. Saturn in the first house is one of the top four transits that an astrologer would or should look for um, that brings the most dynamic life change, the biggest uh, life alteration. So this is the biggie. To have Saturn transiting through the first house is one of the biggest transits a person can have. I might also add that we can especially look at the time period when Saturn crosses the ascendant or if you happen to be having a Saturn transit to your moon or your, your natal moon, that means the, the moon's placement in your birth chart or the sun's placement in your birth chart, then you're also going to cop a big whack as well of Saturn energy. But for the purposes of this video, we're looking at Saturn through the first house alone. And so therefore, the period of time when Saturn crosses your ascendant degree is going to be the most pivotal. It will be one of the most life-changing transits you will experience. Saturn's a very karmic planet, and this transit of Saturn indicates that there will be a karmic gathering in of the seeds you've sown, either in a past incarnation or in this incarnation. You're going to be reaping the rewards, and hopefully they will be rewards, for what you've sown in the past. Or you'll be up-leveling from the mistakes you've made in the past and moving forward with a fresh sheet of paper, a clean slate, a brand new start. So it's a time for questioning. Have you worked hard? Because Saturn, remember, is hard work. Have you worked hard physically? Have you worked hard emotionally, mentally, spiritually, uh, even materially on the material realm? Have you worked hard? Have you done your duty? Have you done your best? Have you sown seeds of integrity? Have you sown seeds of kindness? Have you sown seeds of uh, benevolence or wisdom or uh, you know maturity into your life? And if the answer is yes, then you can expect healthy karmic rewards, support from the universe during this transit. But if the answer is no, if you've been a bit of a lout, looking for fights all the time with other people, if you've been a real nasty bitch, then you can expect the karmic reward for that behavior at this time. When Saturn transits the first house, we're very much drawn inward there's a big focus on refining who we are at this time. And this is going to last two and a half years. We restructure our character. We restructure our personality. Um, we even restructure our outward presentation to the world because that's what the first house represents. How we express to the world and how therefore the world perceives us to be. So that is going to go through a restructuring at this time. 
it's a really good time for self-reflection and self-analysis, you know? How would you like to change? How would you like your life to be different? Look at the last 30-year tra uh, transit of Saturn as he's gone all the way around the horoscope over the last 30 years. Where were you, say, 28, 29, 30 years ago? What were you experiencing? And in what ways would you like to change that through this next 30-year cycle of Saturn around the horoscope? Restructuring, reorganizing your life, reflecting on who you are, changing your personality, changing your appearance, they are all part of this transit of Saturn for two and a half years through the first house. It is a time when Saturn transits the first house when we can feel that nothing's going right, nothing's going our way, we feel blocked, we feel restricted, we feel restrained, those energies of Saturn in our life, on our life journey. We might at this time be you know, desiring and hungering for a promotion in our work or um, some sort of step forward in our relationship, but nothing seems to be happening. No rewards, no promotions, no breakthroughs in life. And that can be very difficult and frustrating. So that it is almost like you know, banging your head against a brick wall. You may very well be feeling this way until the moment when Saturn crosses your ascendant degree. Now, if your ascendant degree is in, say, zero degrees of whatever sign you're looking at in this instance, um, then the crossing will happen almost instantaneously as soon as Saturn moves into your first house. If, however, your rising degree happens to be 29 degrees, then the crossing of this Saturn uh, across your ascendant is not going to occur until later in the transit of Saturn through the first house. But when that crossing occurs, it's like a releasing and, and a restarting and a rebooting of your life computer. So let's just, for example, sake, say your rising degree might be around 15 degrees and Saturn when he crosses that degree and moves from 15 degrees to 16 degrees of the first house if you've got your rising degree at say 15 degrees then boom from that moment Saturn crosses your ascendant you're going to notice some more momentum now the blockages will kind of alleviate and lift they mightn't be completely gone, but they'll start to dissipate and you'll start to notice more momentum, more freeing up. Up until that point, though, when Saturn crosses the ascendant, you can feel restrained and restricted and blocked like life is not moving forward. It's there to teach you. It's there to grow you. It might feel like it sucks at the time, but it's there to create patience. These are Saturn qualities, perseverance, endurance. What Saturn calls us to when he crosses each through each of the houses of the horoscope, what Saturn calls us to is to be able to focus hard work in that realm of our life. Hard work, perseverance, endurance, maturity, and you know, head down, tail up, getting on with the job in that realm of life. That's what he does. And then when he leaves, so in two and a half years after he's gone through the first house, then he leaves and moves into the second house of the horoscope. Then we notice the rewards for our efforts coming back to us. Then if we have worked hard, that's when we get the promotion. That's when the blocks around our marriage start to dissolve and go away. That's when we start to really um, get the blessing once Saturn leaves the first house or any house for that matter. But he's calling us to work hard when he is present in any given house of the horoscope. You'll notice that Saturn, like I said, will the, the energy will alleviate, the energy of blockage will start to alleviate once he crosses the ascendant. But there still will be some things to work through. You still might not get that promotion until he leaves, but you might feel a bit freer, a bit lighter, a bit more pro able to move forward in some way. So this is a two and a half year period when Saturn's in the first house for living life with a very Saturnian view of things and approach to things, being more cautious, following the rules, sticking to, you know, the, the general expectations of society, working hard on yourself, working hard on your life and materially getting the job done and being mature. 
whether that's raising kids, whether that's striving to be the CEO, whether that's producing a, you know, a, a, a great body of artistic work. It doesn't matter what it is, Saturn is calling you in your life journey to work hard in all realms. And he calls you to work hard despite lack of reward or despite rewards coming your way. He wants you to knuckle down and achieve and produce rather than look for, you know, work for reward. It's working for the sake of working at this point. So obviously this is not a good period, this two and a half year period for launching anything new. You know, maybe you, you want to start a new business or maybe you want to, um, you know, try and sell, you've written a, a great biography and you want to get it out there. It's actually not the best time for doing those sorts of things. This is a much better time for analyzing, planning, weighing up your options, assessing all the points of view. If I launch this new business, um, ha who is the demographic going to be that I'm launching it to? Do I have the marketing prowess behind me to make it fly? Can I, uh, do I have the time available to me to, you know, you, you're adding up and weighing up all the pros and cons. And yes, two and a half years might seem like a long time to be doing that, but you want to be really convinced of something being worthwhile before you launch it. And with Saturn here, he makes you dot the I's and cross the T's. The one um, cliche that really sums up Saturn is that one. It doesn't mean that you can't take action while Saturn is in the first house. It is actually a brilliant time for modifying your life, modifying your life direction. So for example, you might want to just quit your job and go and start a brand new business from scratch in something, some field you've never ever done before, but you might be able to modify your approach. Let's say you've been a financial uh, advisor or a banker or something, and you're really, you know, you're just sick and tired of working in that materialistic environment. And you decide, hang on a minute, I could be using these skills that I've got in financial counseling for people who've been through bushfire devastation. And so you modify the direction of your life and you make the necessary adjustments to get to where you now want to go. So the scenario might be that you spend maybe a year and a half really weighing up, okay, what do I want to do? I'm so sick of this financial planning, banking job, whatever. I want to be a financial counselor. How do I change? What do I need? Are there any other certificates I need to get? And you really do the groundwork and then you can modify the direction of your life. So rather than launching some brand new thing, you go from banking to uh, acting on stage or something. Um, instead, you, are mod you can modify what you are doing so that it lines up better with your principles, your values and what you really want to achieve in life. Once Saturn leaves the first house, and you want to go tread the boards in some fancy opera or something, then you can do that. But during this time, or at least until Saturn crosses your ascendant degree, it's very hard to launch new projects and get them to fly. So do the groundwork and the self-assessment and analysis, and you will actually do so much better when the time comes that the universe is supporting you to start and launch something new. But you can, as I said, modify uh, the direction of your life to make it line up better with your principles and your values. I encourage you, if you're going through this transit, to be patient. Again, another quality of Saturn. Be patient for results. They may not manifest for two and a half years until Saturn leaves this sign. So, you know, you, you, you might decide you want to be that financial counsellor and um, you, you start studying to get your financial counselor's certificate and you know it might be take some time while you're working and raising the kids and um, you know trying to renovate your home at the same time and you're studying for this certificate in financial counseling for this is an illustration for example it might take you two and a half years to actually get to the point where you get your certificate and then you can go out and be the financial counselor. So be patient for the results to come. Don't expect change overnight or even modification to your life direction overnight. Really, this is a time for coming to terms also with your identity. Um, 
it's realizing who you are, realizing your limitations, realizing the boundaries that are on your life and the restrictions that are on your life, such as renovating the house, raising the kids, being tied to a job, needing to earn money, blah, blah, blah. It's being grounded and realizing that the way things are is the way they are in this moment. Acceptance is one of the key remedies for difficult Saturn issues. Learning to accept, allow change, flow with change, but accept what is in this moment, very key for Saturn. It's also a very key time for acting on uh, in accordance with your own per, um, purpose, your own set of values, your own mission and, and karmic soul journey. So this is why it's so important to do the deep analysis now. Over the past um, two and a half years before Saturn moved into your first house, you will have been doing a lot of spiritual navigation, coming to terms spiritually with who you are, perhaps diving deep into spiritual reflection and analysis and coming, getting a real spiritual grounding on your life. Now it, it moves much more a, a similar type of analysis process, but on the material earthly plane, the, the, the life experience plane rather than the inner spiritual plane. Now it's all about taking responsibility for your destiny, putting the structures in place such as getting a certificate or such as um, you know developing you know just say you want to open a hairdressing salon or something, getting the skills required for that, you know, developing what you need to restructure and organize your life and take it forward for the next 30 years. So in essence you're kind of sowing some seeds, brand new seeds, that will be harvested again in 30 years time when Saturn returns to the first house. So you're sowing these seeds that are going to build and grow and reach fruition through the next uh, phase, the next season of your life. And in doing so, you're taking responsibility for your destiny. It's not out there in someone else's hands. You're owning it now. You'll be more um, realistic and objective in your approach to life. Saturn will just give that to you because Saturn in the first house is very much connected to having a very grounded, materially realistic focus on life, how it unfolds, what happens, the effects of, you know, cause and cause and effect uh, in the material realm. So you'll have this much more grounded view. You won't be off with the fairies for this two and a half year period. It's actually a really great transit if you're hoping to lose weight because as I said in the intro, Saturn restricts and blocks. So it's likely that you will lose weight with this transit through the first house. That might mean that you get a really good disciplined approach to diet and taking care of your body and exercising. That's one way that can happen because Saturn brings discipline and this is the house of the body. The other way it can happen if you're not careful is through illness and you can lose weight through some sort of illness when Saturn is transiting the first house. So it's actually imperative that you do look after yourself. You might like to take calcium supplements because Saturn tends to go pretty rough on the bones and the teeth. The structures, remember Saturn rules structure, the structures of our human manifested body. So our bones, that's our, that's our foundation, that's our structural self um, in the body. Saturn rules that. Teeth, they're hard, they're structural things that we need in order to eat and speak and all the rest of it. So Saturn rules teeth as well. So calcium is the support for teeth and bones with a Saturn transit across the house of the body. It's highly advised that you take calcium supplements. You can also really correct any bad habits when Saturn transits the first house. If you're smoking or drinking or um, you know eating too much chocolate or whatever, then Saturn moving through the first house gives you the necessary discipline in your outlook to stop doing that. So it's a great time to practice restriction and blockage of the bad habits you want to get rid of. And you can actually, do, with hard work and perseverance, you can achieve um, you know, the, the release of bad habits now. So this can be a blessing when Saturn transits the first house. It will bring slow and steady change. You know, if Uranus was transiting the first house, and I've done a series on that, you might like to check it out on my YouTube channel. But if Uranus was transiting the first house, you can expect that any bad habits you've got are suddenly gone in an instant. It's when Uranus transits the first house, it's like, um, you know, you, you give up smoking overnight, but not with Saturn. Saturn change is achievable through discipline, through hard work, 
through determination and perseverance. And we can expect, because Saturn is a slow planet, we can expect slow but steady change. And this applies to anything represented by the first house. Changes to our life journey, such as going from working in banking to financial counseling, or any other career realm that you might like to apply that to. But slow and steady change to your career trajectory, your relationship status, your uh, life journey in general, what you're experiencing, your relationships, your friendships, your, etc. Your body, slow and steady change to the body and, and the way things are in your body and changes to your perspective on the self and the world, the, your, your worldview can change also, but it'll happen slowly and steadily with the Saturn transit. However, any changes that are made, they'll stick you will keep them for a lifetime, you know? So if you decide to take on a brand new diet during Saturn's transit of the first house, it's likely that you, like just let's say you go vegan. Well, you'll probably be vegan for the rest of your life or at least the next 30 years um, because these changes that you make, they'll last. They'll be for the long haul. They'll be for the long term. Growth in maturity is assured with this transit. So yes, it takes two and a half years and the changes that it brings happen slowly and gradually, but maturity is assured. When Saturn leaves this house, your first house, you are going to find yourself feeling uh, much more uh, responsible, able to carry your duties, carry your burdens much easier because you will have grown and stretched so much, even imperceptibly. You might notice it happening, but at the end of the two and a half years, you'll go, my God, look how far I've come in my maturity level. It's assured with this transit. You're going to be older, you're going to, obviously, but you're going to be wiser and you're going to have a, a less likelihood of being falling into sort of idealistic fantasies about how life should be idealistic deceptions about who you are as well. They'll be gone now. They'll be reduced to ashes, so to speak. And you'll be much more realistic about who you are and what you can offer the world and how you experience life. In alignment with what I was speaking of about the body and your, your bodily experience during Saturn's transit to the first house, get plenty of rest now because it is possible Saturn can make you feel tired and worn out. Your life force energy is represented by your first house and Saturn can block and restrict your life force energy. And so there is a need to get enough rest um, and relaxation as well with this transit so that you can cope with the stresses of life that will come. They come to all of us um, and you'll be better able to cope by making sure you're well rested and relaxed as much as possible during this transit. Again, healthy lifestyle and diet does tie into that as well. Um, make sure that you allow plenty of time for play. Saturn is the planet of hard work and God, he can make us work hard. But you must keep balance. Balance is so important for all of us. I don't care what rising sign you are. You must keep a balance in life. You cannot work 24 hours a day, seven days a week and keep your sanity. Even though Saturn would, you know, dearly love us to be workaholics <laughs> in the negative energy of Saturn. Really, you must keep your balance in order to get through this time in a whole healthy way to take care of your mind, your soul, and your body. So schedule that hit of tennis with your partner or your friends. Go on that holiday. Don't deny yourself the chance to have a break, have a rest. Make sure that you allow yourself debrief time, unwinding time each day. It's really essential. And you may have to sort of underline it in your calendar or, or make doubly sure that you do it because you will be pressured to keep working, keep persevering, keep enduring, you have to consciously decide during this transit, I'm going to take time out. I'm going to take a break. I deserve that. And my body and my mind and my soul needs it. Conscious effort towards um, keeping that balance is required. You might like to rethink your image as well. Um, is the haircut you've got 
really what you like right now you know um do you like the color of your hair do you are you happy with how your body looks you know do you need to lose some weight do you need to tone up you know you what's my wardrobe like what's my makeup look like do i need to make any changes there um now is the time for rethinking your appearance and bringing it also now into alignment with what you truly desire the image that you want to present the world to be now in Hindu astrology, when Saturn is transiting the first house, he is also making a Hindu aspect, not Western aspects, these are Hindu aspects. He is making an aspect to the seventh house, the house opposite, the tenth house, and the third house. So you'll need to do your counting if you're not familiar with whole sign astrology. Obviously, one, two, three, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 whole sign houses. These are the aspects Saturn is making in Hindu astrology. So in Hindu astrology, what I've shared with you just now has been Western. This is Hindu astrology. It's considered that when Saturn makes a transit to through the first house that it's, he is in Hindu astrology considered to be the great malefic and therefore he will undermine your self-confidence in the first house. He will uh, bring less opportunity into your life, less luck, less blessing, less fortune, less chance. So in Hindu astrology, the belief is that it's a difficult two and a half year period because of the the lack of opportunity and self-confidence, etc. represented by Saturn being in the first house. With the third house, the idea is that Saturn's blockage and restriction and malefic Hindu nature goes into third house things. And in the Hindu, the third house is considered to represent siblings. So there might be issues with siblings and brothers and sisters and relatives and so on. There might also be issues with having a low vitality because in the Hindu system, the vitality of the self is seen from the third house. There can also be an incapacity to fulfill your life desires in the Hindu system because Saturn is making an aspect to the third house which has to do with the fulfillment of our desires. In the seventh house... It's considered in the Hindu system that there can be blockages to relationships forming or difficulties with relationships that we are experiencing. Maybe there are lack of opportunities to develop relationships and this includes business partners as well as our intimate relationships. In the 10th house, obviously the idea is that, that Saturn by aspect in Hindu will be blocking the career progress and the success of your worldly achievements. Uh, that they'll be difficult to manifest with this aspect being made. Now, as I said, I, I share this, uh, as I said in the beginning, um, my belief is not that Saturn is this malefic planet, that there is intent behind this, intent to grow us as human souls, incarn uh, sorry, divine souls incarnate and having a human experience, that the intent of Saturn is to grow us into maturity. So, I don't see him as the malefic that the Hindus do. I share this for information purposes, this Hindu segment of this video, for information purposes. We must keep in mind if we're feeling restricted or blocked in these areas that the purpose is to grow our maturity, to, to grow our understanding and our realistic expectations of material earthly life and to keep us exactly that grounded and realistic. So there is purpose behind this and as I mentioned earlier, when we are dealing with Saturn transits that can be challenging, then the way to navigate them is to practice acceptance of what is. Get into Urquhart Tolle, read about um, you know, the practicing acceptance of the present moment and present moment awareness is really one of the key strategies for coping with Saturn times in our life. And we're all going through a Saturn transit right now, this very minute. Saturn is somewhere in the sky and therefore affecting our chart, no matter what setup it is, in some way. So I hope this video has been helpful for you and given you um, a bit of a, a dose of insight into what to expect when Saturn transits your first house. Thanks for, so much for joining me for this video and do tune in for the next one in this series, Saturn transiting the second house.